Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Um, today we're going to talk about if statements and we're going to actually solve a problem that uses multiple if statements um, to help us control um, the output depending on a condition. So to start off, let's read a, the problem that we're solving. It says create a program that asks the user to enter their exam score as an integer. Use an if statement to determine and print their corresponding grade of A, B, C, D, or F. Based on the following grade scale of this right here, where A is 90 to 100, B is 80 to 90, 89, C is 70 to 79, D is 60 to 69, and F is 50, 0 to 59. Okay, So given these conditions, we have to output either A, B, C, D, or F, depending on their integer-based exam score that's been inputted. So everyone, you are seeing a completely different screen. I do apologize right now of me recording a video. Replit doesn't seem to be working for me properly. So I moved into a different coding environment. So I'm using an IDE called VS Code uh, and I'll be executing my code here and you'll be seeing my output on something called a terminal. Okay, so, um, so let's get started before we even break this program down. I want to talk about uh, if statements. So if statements, all right, there are one way to control and make decisions in programming is the use of if statements. The code above only executes the message of no school today if this, you know, the day variable is equal to either Saturday or Sunday. That being that this condition that we have in our brackets for our if statement, which is a special um, keyword reserved in Java that helps us to um, control or control pathways of our code depending on the condition of something being true. So if this condition is all true, right, or at least in this case, one of them is true because we're using an or operator, right, we get to output this message, all right? So this is how we format. We write an if statement and we write a Boolean condition and it will only execute the code here when we run our program as long as that Boolean condition is true. And, you know, if you don't know how to write a Boolean condition yet, uh, I recommend that you read these two chapters, Boolean operators and compare strings to help you create Boolean expressions. All right, so let's go to our code. At this moment, we have our uh, scanner ready or with it being imported. We have our scanner object created and we have it closed. So we are good to go. So in our program, what we need first, let's just handle an input of the exam score. So let's first prompt the user to input an exam score. So enter your exam grade, that, and then we can do the following. We can say that string user input is equal to uh, SC. We're going to use next line. And then we're going to convert that value. So we're going to get an integer mark of doing integer parse int. And we're going to go user input. And we're just going to be converting that into an integer of something we can work with. And we have now handled our input. Since we have our input done, and since our output is depending on how we process our mark, we're actually going to handle those two portions together. We're going to do our processing and output together. The first condition is, well, we have to make sure that our mark is with, uh, is greater or equal to zero and less or equal to 100. So we're going to say, um, if mark is less than zero or mark is greater than 100, we're going to say, well, that's an invalid mark. So we're going to say system, the out, that println, that an invalid mark input. So we'll write a message like that. And at this moment, let's test our code. So I saved my work and I can tell Java compiler to compile my video 07.java file and it has compiled it. So then I can run Java on a class called video 07 and it's going to ask me to enter an exam grade, and I'm going to say I got 125 mark on my exam. Well, that's an invalid mark inputted, and we can't really have that grade as an exam. Mm -hmm. So if I run this program again and give it like a negative 20, I'm also going to get an invalid mark because, well, that's not possible. It's not making any of our Boolean conditions here true. Therefore, we can't, can't really go get a grade, but it's actually, sorry, the 125 and negative 20 are making 
any of um, both one of the sides of our or boolean conditions to be true that's why we're getting this output but we can't let this um, get a grade of a b c or d or f because it's not gonna meet these criteria all right so let's say we have met the criteria let's say you got an 82 on the exam right now nothing happens because this only gets outputted if either this condition is true or this condition is true so let's handle the a situation if we were to get 90 or 100. so at this moment what we're going to do is write an an else if statement we're going to start a bracket and then i'm going to start my curly braces to set up my if statement like so that's just the way i like to code i like to set up my curly braces first and my else if with an empty condition first okay now the reason <coughs> Now, the reason why I write else if here is because, well, I'm saying that if this condition was false, I want to check another condition. OK, if I just wrote an if right here, if even if this was true or false, we will still execute this. But if I wrote an else, if this condition is true, my program will ignore this section because we know that this was true. There is no need for me to handle this condition. And as a programmer, you don't want the computer to do calculation that is unnecessary for the computer to do okay so in here we're going to handle the uh, 90 to 100 scenario okay so we can say that if mark is greater or equal to 90 and we're going to use the ampersand here we're going to say if mark is less than or equal to 100 that means we have gotten a so we're going to output system out the printlin we're going to just write down a Therefore, we have that set. So let's test that code. I'm going to need to compile my code again and then run my video seven. Let's say we got a 95. We should be now able to handle the A situation. All right now, at this moment, I can also start writing an else if and set my little skeleton code here to say that my uh, I'm going to start a new else if. Right? We're going to handle the B situation if our mark was B uh, of 80 or 89. All right, and this here is going to be very interesting because I only have to write mark is greater than or equal to 80. The reason is the following. I can guarantee that mark is not going to be less than zero or greater than 100. And if I got to here, I know for sure that my mark is less than 90 and less for sure less than 100, okay? Therefore, we are gonna be, if this is true, that means we're in a range between 80 to 89, inclusively both sides. That means if mark of if mark is greater than or equal to 80, I can guarantee that it is not gonna be higher than 90 because it would have made this statement true. Therefore, we would have said system.printlin here and output B like so. Okay, and now let's save and test our code by first compiling and then running our Java code. We could, if we got an 82, now we got a grade of B. Now we're going to repeat that process so that we can handle C, D, and F, and that will be the solution of this program. All right, so if it's greater than 70, we got a C. If it's greater than 60, we got a D. And if at this point we can say, Else, if our mark is greater than or equal to zero, we will got a grade of an F. So we can say system out the printlin. We got an F here. Okay. Now, I wrote an entire condition for zero, and what I want you to do is just really think about um, the next time you code if that if this condition was necessary for the program that I wrote, and that's something that I want you to think about. But I'll save this work. Let's test our program by compiling first. Ooh, I forgot a semicolon there. Let's try that again. And then I'm going to say that, well, I, let's say I really plunked it. I got a 48 and I ended up getting a letter grade of F on this exam. All right. So that was it. That's how you use an if and else if statement, how you can write Boolean conditions to help you out and write, um, actually put different pathways in your code depending on a condition being true and we can actually check many conditions and successions to help us put many different pathways and as always thank you for watching and stay classy